Hello fantastic people, I hope you are doing great. So not many of you know, but I'm working on redesigning or rather completely reworking one of my older games uh, called One But Dwarf. And while working on it, I found out that there is one interesting subject that I would like to cover, the camera shake. I know this subject has been covered by many, many different YouTubers in many different videos, but I feel there is always one small thing missing. Basically, you see, I have those two drawers and it happens sometimes that I need two shakes going on at the same time. For example, if this drawer starts opening the gate and this dies, you see the shakes kind of combined in the sense they work nicely together. Um, the rule I'm having here is that the stronger shake is getting prioritized, but they don't stop the progression of the old shake, but rather um, work together. And once the stronger one is finished, this the weaker one continues. So if we do it very quickly, so for example, that and that, you see, we went back to the weaker shake. And today I would like to show you how to achieve exactly that. The easiest way to implement camera shake is to use the Cinemachine package, because it has the feature already created as a part of the camera. In order to install the package, I go to Window, Package Manager. Over here, you have to make sure that you are searching in the Unity registry rather than in your project. So I'm clicking on that. Then we can use the search box. I entered already before the Cinemachine. So we see we have the package over here. You click on the name and then simply install it. Okay, so now I can close the window and we have to create virtual camera. In order to do that, I click right mouse button in the hierarchy and then select Cinemachine Virtual Camera. Let's call it CMV Cam. Awesome. I can reset its transform. Uh, we have some settings which give us warnings, so let's fix those ones. Um, for the body, because we won't be following anything or anything like that, we can simply do do nothing. And for the aim, also let's select do nothing. Warnings are gone. If we have a look into our game, we'll see that we cannot see anything, and that's because our um, camera is at the wrong position. So over here, I have to adjust the um, Z position and everything will work as expected. Awesome, so we have that. And now, if I click on the Cinemachine uh, view cam and press play, over here, you can see I have this noise setting. And this is the camera shake. So let's change it to basic multi-channel pearly. And now we have um, several profiles created for us already. Uh, so for example, um, let's select the handheld normal mild. And we see suddenly our screen starts to shake depending on the profile. Uh, we select, the movement will be slightly different. So this is definitely not something we would like um, for our game. For example, when the character dies or, or, or when something drops or when we attack, this type of things. Um, so in order to have that type of movement, we can go with a 6D shake or alternatively with 6D wobble. And I think the wobble looks a little bit better. So I'm going to go with it. In order to control the wobble, uh, we can change the amplitude and frequency. The amplitude gain controls how strong the wobble is. So the, the larger the value, the stronger the wobble is. Now, the frequency gain controls the speed of the wobble. So the larger the value, the quicker the wobble. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set the frequency to 1 and using a script, I'm going to change the amplitude gain from 0 to some value provided um, by the script. So let's do that. So first we need to stop being play mode and let's just change the noise once again. So over here, wobble, amplitude gain, 0. Awesome. So now I'm going to create a script. Create. C sharp script, and I'm going to call it camera shaker. The script is going to be attached to my CMV cam. So let's add it over there. And now let's open the script. Let's start by removing the unnecessary stuff. Now let's create private class shake request. 
let's give it two properties. Um, first one will be public float um, shake amount and public float shake time. Let's make it public for a second. Mm, so this way, when you have a class inside of second class, it's so-called inner class. Now, when it's public, it is accessible by other um, scripts, other classes, and they can create instances of it. So, for example, over here I have some random class, and inside of it I can um, utilize that class just slightly different way. So, instead of doing just shake request, you see I have to add the camera shaker dot. And this would work the way you would expect it. So, I can do normally var x equals new camera shake, camera shaker dot shake request. And you see this works as expected. So now I could do x shake amount and so on and so on. But because we want to use the class only inside of this class, what we can do, we can change it to private. So if we would try to create a regular class in a separate file uh, being private, it won't be possible because uh, it would be strange. So you would have a class inside of file which would not be accessible by any other class. So um, we cannot do that. Over here we have this private class, awesome. And now we would like to have the list of those um, shake requests. So shake requests, let's call it requests. And the new, awesome. Uh, we can also make it read-only. Great. So we have that. And now we would like to allow other scripts or um, other functionalities, for example, Unity events, to request the shake. So what we can do for that, we can create a public void method. Let's call it request shake. And of course, we should allow to provide the amount and time. Now, there is a small problem uh, with Unity events. I'm going to show it to you in a second. But for simplicity, let's just add to the requests the mm, new shake requests with those two mm, parameters or those two fields. Let's just make it as properties. Shake amount will be amount and and shake time will be time. Awesome. So we have that. Uh, and because it's public, others will be able to access it. So I'm going back to Unity. And over here, you see I have two buttons, shake A and shake B. So in order to connect action to them, um, I can utilize those um, Unity events which are already there. So for that, I simply click plus, drag and drop our CMV cam over here. And then over here, I can select actions from the um, camera shaker. Now there is something um, other going on. You see, we created public method, but it's not there. Uh, why is that? And that's because if you look closely, some of those are fields, right? Uh, some of those are methods with one parameter or no parameters. What I noticed, I don't know why is that, you cannot use uh, Unity events directly with, par uh, with methods that have more than one Parameter. So first, for the objects that would like to only request amount and have the time zero, uh, we can overload the method. So we can create public void request um, shake float amount and then simply call request shake with that amount and time equal to zero. Um, of course, Rider is complaining that um, I could make it optional parameter, I could do that, then do not have this, but unfortunately this will not work because this um, this method still does have two parameters and it will not be seen by the Unity events. So let's roll back to that version. And now we suddenly can request shakes. So let's just set that and let's set amount to, for example, two. Awesome. But now somehow we have to handle that request, right? We're going to do it inside of our update method, but first we need a reference to something crazy. Um, so let's just go to the awake method first. Awake. And now. So we know our game object has a virtual camera component, right? So we can grab it. 
get component, scene and machine, virtual camera. Awesome. And now from that virtual camera, we have to get another component. So let's make a private uh, field for it. And let's type its type. Cine machine, basic multi channel purling. Yay, and that's actual noise. So over here. So over here, we can simply do noise equals cn get cine machine component. And over here, we just provide the same type. Awesome. And now we can make it even shorter. So we can grab this over here, get rid of that. Awesome. So we have our noise uh, noise component. And now um, if you're interested where this comes from or how to find it in case you forget. So if you have a look in the editor, over here you see the noise setting is basic multi-channel purling. And this is literally, you see the same thing. Cine machine, basic multi-channel purling. So we have that. And now we have to set um, the value. So let's create the update method and first of course we want to check if there is no um, if there are no requests right so if requests count equals zero then we want to do two things first one is we want to clear any shake that we could potentially have right so noise m amplitude gain equals zero so once again the setting is exactly the same as over here. So amplitude gain, this is the one. Now, second thing, we simply return because no other action is then valid for us. Otherwise, we want to first find the strongest shake, right? So the value that we want to actu actually apply. So var strongest shake equals and now uh, we are going to use link, so requests max to find the value. So shakes, um, shake, and the value that we want to find is the amount. Awesome. So this way over here, we'll have a value of the strongest shake from all the requests in the list. And of course, once we have it, we apply it to the uh, noise. So noise, amplitude gain, equals strongest shake. Beautiful. And if we have a look, so let's just go back to the editor. Let's just call over here too. And over here, let's request shake with strength five. Awesome. And let's test it. So if I click the shake A, you see I'm having um, infinite shake of strength two. If I click on shake B, you see the shake is much stronger um, because it has a value of five. Now, if it doesn't matter how many shakes A I request, they will be added to the list, but none of them will be executed um, because the strongest one is five. So if I now change it to seven or to make sure it's visible, I change it to 10. And now if I once again request it, you see it's even stronger. So everything works as expected. Now we need somehow to basically clear the shakes to get rid of those that shouldn't be there anymore. So in order to do that, we'll be iterating through all of the requests uh, in reverse order. So for var e equals now request, oops, requests count minus one. So that's the last index. Now it is larger or equal zero. Then we want to decrease I. Awesome. Now you may be wondering why would we iterate it um, in the reverse order? The answer is pretty simple. Um, so of course we'll be removing stuff from the list, right? So imagine situation you have uh, stuff at index 0, 1, 2 and 3. You start iterating regular way from the beginning, right? And maybe one more information over here. The size is 4. So we start over here and we see, okay, this one is all right. We don't remove it. Then we go to this point and we say, okay, we should for some reason delete it. So we get rid of that. And now look what happens. This is deleted and the index of this item 
changes to 1 and index of this item changes to 2. And of course, this can cause a lot of issues. Uh, if I remember correctly, don't take that for granted, but I think uh, this will even throw an exception. So uh, you have to be very careful with that. If we do, um, if we do it in the reverse order, so 3, 2, 1 and 0, the same count, so count is 4, and now we check this item, it's OK, we check this item, it's OK, we check this item and want to remove it, right? So, OK, we remove this item, and now the item at 0 that we haven't checked yet is still at zero, nothing changes. The thing that changes are the next um, items that we already checked. So there is no problem because they are not relevant anymore. So I hope um, this is clear. That's the reason we do it this way. So first we want to grab um, the request that we are checking currently. So from requests, let's get the one at the index i. Then what we want to do, we want to decrease its shake time by time delta time. So basically what we're going to do is when we request uh, some time, for example, three seconds, every, uh, every frame, because we are in update, will be decreasing um, the time by the delta time. The delta time is basically the amount that passed between current frame and the previous one. So obviously uh, if one second passed, then we get rid of one second. So literally what we would expect. Okay, so we have that. Now, um, if the shake time, so request shake time, whoops, shake time is smaller or equal than zero, then what we want to do, we simply want to um, readjust the shake amount so it starts to fade down. In order to do that, of course, we just need to decrease the amount. So request shake amount and let's decrease it by time delta time times some arbitrary number so let's create a variable for that or maybe field so serialized field private um, let's call it of course of type float and let's call it um, shake decrease amount and let's default it to 10 so basically this is the amount of shake that will be uh, removed every second. Uh, you may be wondering why every second, because um, we multiply it by delta time. So basically if 0.05 passed, then 0.05 of this number, so 5% of this number will be taken away from the shake amount. If this will be one second, right? Then we'll multiply, uh, then it will be one multiplied by 10. So this will give us the exact number. Um, now, here we have small problem because this means we can go below zero and we cannot allow that because um, the shake still works, is applied, even if the amplitude is negative. So it has to be exactly zero. In order to do that, uh, we have several ways, but I think the simplest one is to just use the um, mathf max. And we provide the um, parameters. So basically what this method will do, will always select larger from the two. So until this one uh, is larger than zero, oops, we should change it then to that. Okay, so now until the whole operation will be uh, larger than zero, then it will be selected. So that correct, once it reaches zero or below, it will always be zero. So this is exactly what we need. And now if our request uh, has the shake amount equal to zero, so it means we faded it out to zero, right? Then we simply remove it uh, from the list. So remove request. Awesome. And this is really all we need to have our shake working. So let's test it for the shakes that do not request any time. Let's check this one and we see we have very brief uh, small shake and with this one we have slightly stronger shake but it also nicely fades out. So everything works as expected. Um, but now of course we would like to request um, the shake with time, right? That's the whole reason we created there this property. So let's create another script. Um, this is a small workaround 
that I use whenever I need to pass more than one information to Unity event. Uh, I'm not saying this is the best way because probably the best way to do that uh, would be to already use regular events or subscribe uh, using code and so on so on. So do it whenever you have to find work around for something you have to think if it's worth it and maybe instead of that it's much better to actually do it um, properly in code uh, but for now let's just keep the convention as we started so we want to use the unity event so i'm creating camera shake requester script let's open it clean up as usually and now we want it to have two private fields so private float shake amount and another one private float shake um, time then we also need reference to our camera shaker and now of course you could also assign it in the awake method instead of um, using the manual reference that you have to drag and drop um, you could use find a subject of type and this type of stuff but um, let's just keep it simple for now so we have that and now we need a simple method so public void request shake without any parameters and we simply use the shaker request shake with both um, properties or both uh, parameters passed um, i just noticed that i misnamed them so let's just fix that awesome and this is all we need to do here. So let's open the level once again. And on my shake A and shake B buttons, let's add um, the script. So camera shaker. I want over here the amount two and let's make it for two seconds. Of course, let's fill the reference and on the B shake, let's just add once again the script over here let's do um, strength five and maybe the time one second and reference to the camera and now we have to um, change the action so over here we use the shake requester and we use our method so request shake and the same over here and let's test and the first one works as expected and the second one as well what's important um, you see this shake is um, this shake is weaker and but lasts longer so what we can do let's even increase it to five seconds um, and now you see that when we start this shake and just perform the stronger one the stronger one finishes and we go back to the weaker one so this is exactly what we would expect and the same way we can start those two at the same time and when the B finishes we go back to A. So everything works as expected. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If so don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and most importantly have a fantastic day. I love you and bye bye.